it is time for what the H because Caleb is throwing heat when it comes to Rick Barnes. What the? What was he thinking? Release the hounds. The Dave Hooker Show. Keep cool. A presentation of offthehooksports.com. According to Caleb Calhoun on offthehooksports.com, Rick Barnes is one win away from becoming the greatest coach in Tennessee history. My first retort is Caleb Bruce Pearl got to an Elite Eight. You have to have a deeper run to be considered a better coach. Also, Bruce Pearl took over at a a time where the program needed to be built up. So there's something innate there. I don't know how much you count that, but that's on my plate. So convince me with a, a, a similar record at Tennessee, making the Elite Eight just once, if that's how it plays out, you would take Barnes over Pearl. Because my initial response, you may change my mind here, give it a shot, is I would take Pearl over Barnes. If Barnes makes the Elite Eight this year, give me an accomplishment Bruce Pearl at Tennessee had that Rick Barnes hasn't had. Well, I mean, he uh, girlfriend. <laughs> Bruce right, Pearl. He did all right there. He did pretty well there. Bruce Pearl. Al High alum. Bruce Pearl. Oh my gosh. Bruce Pearl had the um most impressive six-year run in Tennessee basketball history. I won't take that away. And he was only coached for six years, but you know, coaching is a body of work and longevity. And I get, let, let me, let's back up for a minute. Bruce Pearl. What did he do at Tennessee? He gave them their first 30 win season, their first number one ranking, their first outright SEC title in 30 years and took them to an elite eight and made three sweet 16s. Rick Barnes got them their second number one ranking. Their second 31 season, he had them at number one for three weeks. Bruce Pearl only had them at number one for a week. And he's won an SEC regular season title now. He's made three three sweet 16s. And he actually won an SEC tournament title, which Bruce Pearl never won. And you're telling me if he makes it to the Elite Eight and gets bounced out that you're splitting hairs to some extent. I mean, he is officially the most accomplished head coach in Tennessee basketball history. And I'm going to push back on you and what Bruce Pearl versus Rick Barnes inherited. I think. Well, they were both bad. I thought you might call me out on that one. Well, Rick Barnes, yes. But look, Bruce Pearl, because Tubby Smith didn't know how to evaluate talent, did take over where Chris Lofton fell out of the sky into his lap. And he also took over where C.J. Watson whose family was in that was from Tennessee wasn't even trying to be recruited was committed to Tennessee and was a senior too. And he also did have major Wingate, a four-star center down low. So Bruce Pearl took over and had talent on the roster. Mm-hmm. Pearl didn't recruit well, but he did at least have some decent players. Again, buzz got lucky. The, I'm naming major Wingate, CJ Watson. Let's call it what it is. Dave. No, it's Chris Lawson. Chris Lawson fell out of the sky into Bruce Pearl's lap. Is that fair to say? Yeah, he was pretty good. Kind of like a, mini me version of Steph Curry. He's got poor man's Steph Curry, Don self state farm customer service matters with Don self. And they're right there in the Chattanooga area. Go to Don self.net Don self.net. If you're not in his area, then he'll help you find the state farm agent that can take care of you. They've been doing this thing for over 40 years. They kind of know what they're doing. It's Don self Don self.net customer service still matters. What about the fact that if not for Pearl having impromptu pep rallies in the cafeteria, if not for him painting his chest, Tennessee may still be fighting the battle of relevance and may not even get Rick Barnes because Bruce Pearl hadn't built up the program if you don't hire him. I think that is an important piece of the puzzle that is every bit as important as wins or loss. losses, it's just harder to quantify. I don't know. I think Tennessee was a desirable job, honestly, even before Bruce Pearl. I think that um, they bungled their coaching searches because they weren't really willing to work hard to hire coaches, as you know, Dave. I mean, but it's not like they couldn't have gotten certain coaches in the past. I do believe they could have gotten Bill Self at one point when they were looking for a coach back in 97. 
um, when they landed on Jerry Green. Don't quote me on that, but there is a coach they were looking for that I thought was pretty good during that time. And when I, they hired Jerry Green. Yeah, when they stumbled, when they hired Jerry Green, who wasn't there. Are you thinking of Gene Stallings? No, that was when they hired Buds Buds Peterson, wasn't it? Not Gene no. Stallings. You're thinking of you're thinking of um no, not Gene Jim Stallings. Stallings. No, the but, guy at Stallings, the bald guy who Kevin Stallings. Yeah, Kevin Stallings. Kevin Stallings. They were gonna hire Kevin Stallings and uh Doug Dickey went to take a phone call from Jerry Green's agent in the other room and Kevin Stallings' wife uh, eavesdropped on the call and told uh Tennessee's contingent that they could get the bleep out of their living room if they're going to be taking calls from other candidates. The new Sentinel actually ran Kevin Stallings up on the front as Tennessee's next basketball coach. That's how it melted down so quick, just poof. So that may be okay. who you're thinking of. Sorry to get sidetracked. Yes. But that's no, a good right. story. You got to admit that. That's a heck of a story. And by the way, Kevin Stallings. Now, this is what helped with Bruce Pearl. You got to remember, who did Tennessee have? They had Kevin O'Neill, who was just all defense, grinded out win 30 to 29. They tried to hire Kevin Stallings, who was basically Kevin O'Neill in that way. They hired Buzz Peterson, who just, and they hired Jerry Green, who just didn't bother to coach at all. They hired Buzz Peterson, who coached in the old Dean Smith, like not evolved at all from 1980s uh, style. So they were always coaching a boring brand. Do I think Rick Barnes could have created the fireworks Bruce Pearl created immediately? No. But do I think Rick Barnes was runs a more exciting brand of basketball than those coaches we just named? Yes. I mean, and so part of it was they were hiring coaches. They weren't just – the reason it looked so different with Bruce Pearl was relative to just how boring the styles were before Bruce Pearl. They were just unwatchable styles of basketball. Okay, I want to ask you this question, and I'm going to put it up as our new poll question. Who would you hire right now? There are times I ask the question because I want to know where people stand because I feel like I'm having trouble reading the room. There are other times I feel like I'm reading the room, but I want to see how well I'm reading the room. So I just put up on the YouTube page, and I would love your vote. Who would you hire right now? Bruce Pearl, Rick Barnes. Calhoun University is open for business you have unlimited funds. You can go buy. You can go get any coach you want to. So who are you hiring, Bruce Pearl or Rick Barnes? Before you get to that answer, I want to tell you about our friends at Quality Tire Pro, downtown Chattanooga, the full-service automotive brake alignments, oil changes, and more since 1957. Stop by and say off the hook sports said, hey, Bo, hey, Bo, Cherokee Boulevard or online at qualitytirepros.com. Caleb? It's Rick Barnes, and it's not even close. It's not even close. Now, Bruce Pearl is younger, right? <laughs> yes, Bruce Pearl is younger, but at that age, age becomes more about who's healthier than the number. Okay, Bruce Pearl is six years younger. Who's healthier? They've gun to your head. Who's going to live longer? That's more about who's living. I mean, longer. he looks six years older, but except for the face, you know. I mean. Um, he looks six years older instead of six years under younger. He does. He does. He, I mean, people were saying that I, people were talking about, you know, all the jokes on Bruce Pearl painting his chest. Rick Barnes would look better painting his chest than Bruce Pearl did. I can just tell you that right now. Don't want to see any of them though. I'm <laughs> but it's Rick Barnes. One, I talked to my brother over the weekend and he actually had a great point that I didn't even think of. He said, Bruce Pearl's one thing that he has over Rick Barnes, and it's what you bring up, kind of the cheerleader instinct, the mascot, which he was at Boston College. Bruce Pearl knows how to motivate players. Is that fair? He's the best motivator of talent that's ever coached a game. I would agree with that. That's... Yeah. In terms of actual development of talent and actual basketball tacticians, Rick Barnes might actually be better. No, I don't. I don't. Uh, well, you threw tacticians at the very end. Developer of talent, I don't think there's any question that Rick Barnes is better. As far as a tactician, that's a little bit more difficult to compare the two. I would, I would, at the time that Bruce Pearl was at Tennessee, he was kind of ahead of the curve, right? On some different right. stuff that he was running. He's not really ahead of the curve. He's kind of like the Chip Kelly of college basketball. So at this point, I don't think you get that great advantage, but I also don't think that Rick Barnes does anything that's incredible. So 
I think it's I think it's Bruce Pearl also because of the age. And I know that he lost over the weekend and Tennessee won, but you would agree with me, this is not any sort of decision that you would make just based off one tournament. No, I would I I you notice I did not bring Auburn losing in the first round into this at all. You did not. I mean, and I never would. I think in general, Rick Barnes develops talent better. Bruce Pearl is ahead of the Bruce Pearl was ahead of the curve, and he's still been able to adjust with teams catching up. You know, I make this joke, uh, Dave. Bruce Pearl at Tennessee was like Steve Spurrier at Florida. Bruce Pearl at Auburn was like Steve Spurrier at South Carolina. Where pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, like you that. know, yeah, because now at Auburn he's had to change up a little bit his style and what he's done. And he's still adjust, he's still been able to adjust. So I give him credit on that. But look at how Rick Barnes adjusted this year. Dave, he's always run a more centered flex offense. And he immediately, when he saw what he had in Don't Connect, switched to a high-low motion offense, running what Bill Self runs at Kansas. Yeah. And he's he's never run that before, ever. And he just switched on it overnight. I mean, that's impressive. And so do you so give I, okay? So when when you're writing up both of their resumes. Um, do you, you look at Bruce Pearl and you say, oh, he was a tactician ahead of the curve for a short amount of time, a few years? Or do you look at Rick Barnes and say he can do more than one thing, which is more valuable if you're looking for a coach? I'm going to go ahead and tell you I go to the latter. I'd still take Bruce Pearl as a whole, but I'll support your point with the latter. Yeah, it's it's the latter. And also because the I we, we used to think it was Rick Barnes was a failed tactician because of the way he flames out of the NCAA tournament. I kind of went back and looked and I do believe it has more to do with, and Jimmy Hyans has brought this up. It, it has more to do with just how Rick Barnes grinds the players too much, but that doesn't mean that he doesn't have an understanding of X's and O's as well as anybody. He just probably over, he, he, he doesn't understand load management as well. Put it that way. But Rick Barnes also has principles. And I've heard some people tell me this, they, you know, what, one of the things Rick Barnes says is to a lot of his players, you go play pro ball, you are going to be practicing intense the whole time. I'm trying to get you ready for that. So maybe in Rick Barnes' philosophy, he's like, I'd rather prepare these players for the pros, even if it means sacrificing wins for myself. Because Rick Barnes is, I've told you guys this, he's that altruistic. He's just in it for player development. That's what he's in this for. Rick Barnes with 79% of the vote, the vote so far on our YouTube page, Bruce Pearl with just 20%. So that's really what I wanted to know is, was it going to be 10, 20 or 30% of you out there that still are kind of holding on to that Bruce Pearl love? Maybe we'll do a Lane Kiffin, Josh Heupel poll tomorrow. I'll just let it go. I mean, I think that Bruce Pearl, just from a pragmatic standpoint, would be a better hire at Calhoun University. But if you're a Tennessee fan, which most of you are, don't vote for the guy that lied to the university and almost got your entire athletic department in NCAA trouble. Don't vote for that guy. I mean, we want to be different and have contrast, but that's not the guy you vote for. Do. And the guy who said he takes it personal when he admitted this, when Auburn beat Tennessee one time, he said, yeah, I take this game type of personally. You know, I want to get back at certain people. I'm like, you got yourself fired. Nobody like wrongly fired you, Bruce. Like you, like Bruce should take responsibility and say he let the fans down more than anything because fans would have, we, we were covering Tennessee at the time. And I can tell you, Dave, when I was covering them, you would agree that if had Mike Hamilton given Bruce Pearl a lifetime contract, every fan would have signed off on it and been fine. Yes. He blew that. Not, Anybody else, by the way, Lane Kiffin versus Josh Heupel, just want to say this. You'd rather have Josh Heupel, but for one game, X's and O's, Lane Kiffin. Yeah, that's fair. Um, <laughs> I don't have a problem with that, but as a whole, um, I would I would definitely rather have, have Josh Heupel. 